How are you doing? I am very well. I heard that last comment. We're your favorite city. <laughs> yeah, oh, you missed it. <laughs> I, I heard well, it. It's, yep. it's, I hope you were recording. Uh, yes. I, it and, was definitely and why recording. shouldn't we be? Yeah. <laughs> definitely recording. Funny, like a lot of my friends are moving to Burlington. <laughs> so Awesome. Yeah, just, awesome. They're, they're all calling me up. They're like, oh, I just bought a house in Burlington. I'm like, really? I like, Very cool. Yeah, so they they want to they want to tour of Burlington by uh, the mayor. So I told them, uh, let's see what I can do. Maybe one hey, day. Hey, when when absolutely we can do it all at the same time. Once we <laughs> let's have, do that. You know, two. I think we're limited to four at a table right now. So that's it. Well, I can only accommodate you and two friends. <laughs> let, let's wait till I move there, and we could all do that together. All righty then. <laughs> okay. How you doing? Really good. Yeah. Good. It's, uh, so. Things are looking really good uh, for yeah, I've been, I've been, and, and the province too. So it's uh, it's great. It's sunny. Patios are open. We're about to hit stage two, I know, and vaccines are up. It's all good. Awesome. So I got a lot of questions. There's been a lot of speculation and all that stuff. Uh, so reports are coming out that stage two might actually happen June 30th. Have you heard oh. anything? Uh, we're, we're hearing the same uh, rumors you are. And yeah, we would certainly welcome that. I'm, I know our community would. And one of the key indicators, two of the key indicators to go into step two was over 70% with first dose, over 20% with second dose. We are sitting at just uh, around 77% first dose in Halton and 21%. Uh, second dose. So I, I haven't had a chance to look at the updated uh, provincial numbers, but they have been tracking very similar to Halton throughout this. So I expect that that's the same. So it makes sense, right? Uh, we do this based on evidence and metrics and criteria, and we're meeting them. And so I think, uh, you know, that that would be welcome to have, have some reopening in time for, um, for July 1st, right? Awesome. Uh, is seventy seven percent? Is that higher than that's higher than the Ontario and Canada average, isn't it? We I haven't looked at the recent Ontario numbers in the last day or two, but we were running really much the very much the same for the last week or two. So you know we yeah. may have moved up a, a, a touch, but that's roughly where the Ontario numbers are as well. Okay. Perfect. The last time I looked, they're they're definitely in the seventies. So uh, so we can you know. Uh, you know, we're meeting those stage two, step yeah. two uh, metrics. So, I, I got my second shot over the weekend. I was the uh, got the vaccine cocktail of AZ Pfizer. So I'm For I'm you? fine. Yep, so I'm I've, good. I've I've got the half cocktail, but the glass is half full. Clear about that at one of our local clinics. So I don't know what I'm getting for the second one because mine was Pfizer. They had a, a delay in shipments on Pfizer, and so some folks were switched over to Moderna. Um, but you know the the evidence, obviously from um, uh, from all the health ex experts, is that that is absolutely fine to mix really different suppliers uh it's it, it, you know it, effectively the same virus or true the same so let me ask you this, uh, uh yesterday i was talking to the mayor of mississauga bonnie crombie uh, and she did mention that the moderna vaccine is going to be in the uh, vaccination centers until mid uh july is that going to be the case in halton as well we have some uh, Moderna and we're just waiting on news. There was a delayed shipment in, for the Pfizer. And so they were giving people the option of either uh, rescheduling their appointment until if they wanted to, have, if they got Pfizer the first time, they wanted to have Pfizer the second time, they can reschedule their appointment to a later date uh, or they can uh, do the earlier date and, and have the Moderna. So I, I haven't seen the timelines in terms of when they're expecting, but everything of course depends on supply. We were expecting yeah. Pfizer now. So, uh, so really if people are uh, interested, uh, call ahead or, or um, uh, you know, watch the news, watch the news yeah. releases from Halton region. Cause that's where I get a lot of my information. Uh, they'll let you know what the situation is and, and you will have been called if you uh, got one dose and, and it's predicted that you will, you will have a different uh, vaccine for a second. You will get that notice. So th this week is Moderna and then hopefully next week, if, if supply comes in, it'll be Pfizer then. 
Well, it was for the next couple of days and that release went out on Monday. So again, I would just check. Uh, okay. I, would, I would just double check if people have questions. Okay. Um, I know there's Moderna hesitancy now. <laughs> so what do you have to say to, uh, you know, the people that are saying, you know what, I want the same, you know, and I, I don't blame them because there's been a lot of, you know, kind of, you know, different mixed messages. So what do you have to say to people that have Moderna hesitancy? So the, I rely on the science and what our medical community is telling us, right? I, okay. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. So I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm going to encourage people to look at the science and the evidence and what we have heard from the Canada Health Agency, as well as NACI, which is the Independent uh, Advisory Committee on Immunizations, that it is safe to mix vaccines. Okay. So that is good enough for me, but I also encourage people, if you have concerns, to talk to your family doctor. So I did both. I, I uh, talked to my doctor about all of the vaccines. We have a member of our family who's immunocompromised, so I had some uh, special questions about that. They know our medical history and uh, satisfied myself that the, the vaccines uh, are safe. And that's from uh, not only a medical expert that knows myself and my family very well, but that's also from all of the other national and really international agencies. That being said, I know that there are some countries that are not recogni recognizing certain types of mixing and matching. And I think that's what's added to the really unfortunate concern and dialogue, especially for those travelers. So I understand I, I, I'm not so sure it's, he maybe there are some people that are, that are hesitant for others. It's a, it's a truly practical matter to yeah. make sure that if they are traveling, now you won't have any problem in Canada, obviously. Uh, but if, if there is that kind of um, differentiation around vaccines where you're headed to, you might want to get that sorted before you go. And, th and that will then obviously have to factor into your decision about what vaccine to get. And I think, I think that's really unfortunate the science isn't there from what we know to justify that approach or that position, but it is out there. And I, I understand that that has caused some concern for people, rightly so. Cool. I get to see Bruce Springsteen now. They're, they're allowing AstraZeneca peeps, so. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my, my son uh, that is in the 12 to 17 range got vaccinated, um, uh, but his next shot's not till October. Has the Halton uh, Health Board uh, kind of, is there a way to speed up the, the, the second uh, shot for 12 to 17 year olds? So my understanding is that that priority has been given to that age category as well as our older uh, members. So those were the first two that got priority for, for uh, well, the, the, the age category got priority way back uh, in the first round of vaccines, yeah. but for second shots, uh, and then for the younger, first and second shots are prioritized. And, and that's to try and get kids vaccinated, obviously, by the end of August when they head back to school. Okay. So, so hopefully it gets bumped up to August then. So well, Yeah. That... So I, I don't have any kids in that age bracket. So I haven't, <laughs> you know, but uh, uh, I do, uh, you know, all of our second doses, for example, are um, end, of Ju end of July. So yeah. that was moved up from September. So it is surprising that, um, you know, some, some are still way far out. But again, everything depends on supply. And they sure. were able to advance us, for, you know, almost two months from our original date because more supply came in. And so we're really dependent on the federal government to get us what we need and the manufacturers to ensure a steady and predictable supply. Cool. You know, we, uh, we have capacity, just, just to note, we have capacity in Halton and have had since the beginning of the vaccine rollout for twice as many vaccines as we are able to administer because the supply simply isn't there. We've hired over 800 people in Halton region to do the vaccine, to, to uh, do the whole program. That's, that's including administration, including, you know, callbacks, call center, as well as the actual folks who put needles in arms. So we, we are ready to do twice what we, what we are doing currently if the supply is there. Did you, did you get your shot at a vaccination center or did you get your shot at a drugstore? 
So I, as soon as my age category was eligible, um, which was for AstraZeneca, I did put my name on a waiting list at two pharmacies close to my home. I, I didn't want to put it on too many because I then I'd have to remember to undo it. <laughs> so I picked the two, the two closest to my home, um, and was put on a waiting list, as many people were. And uh, you know, I I believe in waiting my turn I didn't call and say this is the mayor you know can you can you slide me in a little sooner uh, and then my age group also became eligible for a clinic so of course I signed up there as well and as luck would have it the clinic date came up sooner and as I was actually leaving my appointment at the clinic uh, I got the notice that I could now book an appointment at my local pharmacy. <laughs> so, uh, and then, and then it was actually almost another month after that before the second pharmacy I had signed up for said they had supply and they could take me in. So I did take the first one that was available to me and uh, signed up in actually three places and ended up just taking the first one that came up. Cool. I did exactly the same thing. So um, let's talk about some good news. How is the COVID situation in Burlington? It is amazing. We had one case yesterday. We had zero a couple of days ago. Halton region is in the single digits. That's across all four municipalities. There were zero cases in Halton Hills yesterday, zero cases in Milton, one in Burlington, uh, and eight overall in Halton. So uh, we are, you know, the, the, the shutdown measures as painful uh, and difficult as they have been have worked uh, across the province and certainly here in Halton to stop the spread, which is what they're intended to do. So we, uh, you know, we're all looking forward, I think, to reopening and, and maybe a couple of days early as, a, as an early, you know, Canada Day gift. True. Um, I'm assuming, should I assume that there's no tickets then if, if things are so good? We still have to keep our distance, right? Yeah. And, and the mask bylaw is still in effect. The physical distancing bylaw is still in effect. That's how we keep our safe, how ourselves safe as we reopen. Because COVID is still, there are still active cases of COVID. There are still people with COVID in Halton. Um, so, you know, it can still be spread and we still have the variants and there's other communities all around us where there's, there's COVID. So, you know, I've, I've been hearing some, uh, medical professionals, uh, I actually reached out to our own medical officer of health and said, you know, looking at, looking into the not too distant future, how long do you think we'll need the mask bylaw and all of that? And, uh, the advice was, we're going to need it for a while because it's quite possible that our new world will not be without COVID, it will be learning to live safely with, with COVID. And what does that mean for the measures that we uh, have undertaken? Um, you know, I suppose the upside of the mask bylaw is that flu is way down. <laughs> All the other transmissible, you know, viruses and conditions way down. So, so overall, actually, we're, we're healthier, probably, generally speaking, uh, except for obviously the folks who have had uh, COVID, which has been devastating. And, and we've, uh, we've lost, you know, 58 people in our city due to this terrible disease, uh, well, terrible virus. So, you know, the, the advice that we're getting is we can start to reopen, but as we do, we're going to still need physical distancing. We're going to still need masking, still need hand washing. It's, it's just good. You know, that is just good, good hygiene, you know, with or without COVID uh, for a little bit longer. And, and that's to make sure that, that this doesn't just catch hold and we have another fourth wave, which nobody wants. And, you know, could we could businesses survive? Could the community survive another wave? Um, you know, I don't think anyone was expecting the third wave to be as devastating as it was. It was the worst, uh, you know, the worst infection rates of the entire pandemic. And that's because we opened when, we, well, that's because the province opened when it opened. Yeah. Sure. So, um, so yes, as long as those bylaws are in place for the purpose of ensuring that we can stay open and not have a fourth wave, we will issue tickets where that is violated. I don't think there'll be a fourth wave. 
<laughs> well, it, it, things are looking good. So I have optimism in my heart. That is what I'm going with. So, okay, we're going to get off the uh, the COVID tip right now and talk about other things. Mm -hmm. After a close 4-3 to three vote in City Council for more rainbow crosswalks, the first question I ask is, who voted no for rainbows? Well, I, I uh, you know, the, the, the folks, I, I think everyone's accountable to their vote. So those who voted in favor are accountable. I'm certainly happy to speak to my own vote on that. Those who did not support will be directly accountable to their constituents for their vote. And I'm not going to try to speak on behalf of others and explain, you know, why or how. I wouldn't presume to, to be the explainer for that. Yeah. Um, but the... Um, uh, it was my it was my motion, uh, and uh, councillors uh, Nissan Galbraith and uh, Bentavania were supporters right from the get go, including for the funding for it. And the motion actually included three things. It included uh, three additional rainbow cross walks right away in 22, uh, and then consideration of three more during our 2022 budget. So that's not set in stone, but the idea around having six. Of course, we have six wards in the city, and it was really important to the community and, and members of council to ensure that the crosswalks were dispersed throughout the city so that each corner of the city, each ward of the city had an opportunity to, um, to, to have this symbol and sign of inclusion. We also authorized as part of the motion um, uh, asking our staff to look into rainbow benches in each ward. So there's oh. a program right now where a council member can choose uh, every once a year can choose a location of a new bench in their ward. So we asked staff as part of that motion to um, to report back to us on where, uh, you know, could we get some bulk buying and then the council members will have an opportunity to choose, first of all, if they want a rainbow bench, but secondly, uh, where that would go. Uh, we also asked staff to report back on a potential banner program. So that's another way, uh, you know, if a crosswalk is not feasible in a certain part of the city or a bench um, is, isn't, you know, in, in proximity, what about uh, banners on street poles or light poles or what have you? So, uh, so they'll report back on that. So it was really a suite of different uh, options for, um, for us to explore and uh, and ensure that we really throughout the city that that we have dispersed this message of inclusion and, and six may sound like a lot but it's really not when you think of you know the size of Burlington and and people really uh, you know I heard from our young people um, we we have one already in the city so that was installed last year and there was every intent to install additional ones uh, and that just kind of uh, got put on hold and pause uh, due to COVID last year, but we're starting to pick up, you know, we see a life after COVID, we're starting to pick up, um, uh, you know, non-COVID uh, things. But, um, you know, after that first one went in, I heard from people all over the city, students, teachers, please put one in front of the school. It, it surprised me. It was from all over, all corners of the city, just independently people reaching out saying, the next one needs to be around a school. And I followed up and talked to some people about that. You know, tell me more about that. You know, we, because my thinking was, let's just put it in the most visible place possible. You know, the, the street with the most traffic, for example. So we, we have, our first one is, you know, checks that box. It's on Lakeshore yeah. Road. It's right across from uh, Spencer Smith Park. Um, it's not near a school. Uh, so, so that was the message that we heard. And over 4,200 people uh, filled out a survey. We asked people like, if we're going to do six, one in each ward is the idea. Uh, where would you like it to go? And, and we, we put school locations in to see if and, and there, was, there were other locations that were, had been suggested by the community uh, along the way. And, and since last year, we had a small working group that, that worked on the first rainbow installation. And that included um, a number of stakeholders uh, in, in that conversation. And, and they had said, yeah, uh, schools are good. We checked in with them again. Here's, here's some suggestions. Feel free to add some. So there was a whole list of uh, locations and the number one that came that came through uh, were around schools and and that's because our young people 
our teachers, our administrators in schools need to see, literally see visible signs of support on the street that their community values, their city values, diversity and inclusion. And, uh, you know, why, why a crosswalk? Well, signage can be vandalized. We, we've seen pride lawn signs stolen from people. You can't really do much with a, a crosswalk. Yeah. I mean, I suppose you could paint, throw paint at it, that's happened, but you can't take it away. And, and it was really important to have some sort of permanence, uh, certainly important for me. And that's what the rainbow, uh, the rainbow crosswalk does. Um, and we have benches as well. So again, it's not an either a bench or a banner or a crosswalk. All of these symbols are really important. We also raised the flag and we just, uh, we just uh, actually got our hands on a progressive flag. Uh, which includes the rainbow, uh, but it also includes the trans colors and the black and brown uh, uh, colors for for uh, people of color. So, uh, so we just we raised that. We'll have an announcement about that on Friday um, that we're putting that on the city flag. So, uh, so all of these things are really important, and it's really not a question of one and done. Um, you know, well, we've got the flag that should be good enough. Uh, what we heard from the community is this is so critically important and they face so much discrimination, especially at a young age, especially in schools, that that's really an important message to send uh, to our young people. And that was, that was verified by some of the comments that came in on the survey, by the stakeholders that we had reached out to and, and asked for their feedback. Uh, the overwhelming amount of support in the community for this was really, um, it was really awesome to see. The vast majority of the community is solidly behind this and solidly behind uh, spending the money to get it done. And, you know, I've, I've said, um, uh, it's not an original quote to me, but what you value is what you fund, right? True. You, you can demonstrate what's important to you by what you'll put money into. And this was really important. All three, banners, benches, and rainbow crosswalks. Awesome. Who said that quote? I don't know. Well, you know what? We... So, <laughs> The it's consultants good. that the consultants that do our strategic plan, and I forget their name, but they it was actually something that really stood out to me when we were doing a strategic plan. Um, and the consultant said, uh, what matters to you is actually not in your strategic plan. It's what you choose to fund. It's in your budget. Your what you value, what's important to you as a council and as a community is what you put in your budget. And that's always stuck with me. I've heard it more than once uh, as well. But, okay. but yeah, and it's not to say that strategic plans are important, but the point was, if you say this is important to you, you got to be willing to step up with money to make it happen. And that's where the budget comes in. So if you, if you have a strategic plan, but aren't willing to fund it, to put it into your budget, then it's not actually a strategic plan. It, you're basically saying uh, it's not that important to you. True. Right? That almost, so that's, almost, a, that's always sat, sat with me that if we, we can't just have a strategic plan either, we can't just say we're for something, uh, we need to do the work and the action and, and it doesn't always take money, but it sometimes does. That almost makes too much sense. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, this is a pretty inside baseball question here. No, no, actually it's not. It's, uh, for those who don't know, you recently started a Mayor's Monday mailbag. Is that true? I did. Sure. Yes, I did. It was wanting to answer questions from the public. You recently addressed a sludge at Beachway Park. Tell us about yep. that and why is that a big concern? So we were getting lots of questions from residents because it came around the same time as the implementation of the parking fees for Beachway. So I'll, I'll speak to both. But the fir first of all, the parking fees are just to manage the parking, believe okay. it or not. Uh, if we didn't have to staff the parking lot, provide uh, yeah, bylaw officers to make sure people aren't parking illegally, have park ambassadors down there to help people make the right choice about where to park and not block people in and not put a not put their car on a gas line we wouldn't have to charge for parking so the parking fees are to pay for the extra staffing and administration to make sure that the parking is done properly and doesn't put anyone at risk 
Uh, but people are saying, well, why don't you use some of that funding for cleaning up the beach? So here's, uh, so our staff are out every day grooming the sand. They, they scrape the sand, they take the litter up. Uh, unfortunately, we do have people occasionally who um, burn fires. We try to nip that in the bud and we have our bylaw officers and police patrolling that regularly, uh, but they'll take that up as well. And so folks were saying, well, a whole pile of sludge is washed, washed up on the shoreline. What are you going to do about that? And why don't, why don't you, you pay uh, some of the money for that? So as I said, the parking fees are for the parking. However, we do have budget to, as I said, groom the sand. However, um, that we can't deal with that while it's still in the water. So our staff will collect it if it's come out of the water because our equipment can't go in the water. Yeah, okay. uh, so once it kind of washes up enough, they have uh, equipment that will collect it. They uh, they take it off uh, the beach, let it dry because it's very heavy, and then remove it. But the challenge is that um, this stuff washes up in the water, and it's it's uh, it's actually it, it's wave action, typically due to rain and storm and wind, that dredges it up from the bottom. So it's, it's just natural algae, seaweed. It's what lives in a lake at the bottom <laughs> that okay. you don't normally see because it, it settles. But when there's a big storm and there just before that sludge appeared, we had a, a pretty wild one out there. Uh, and so it washes up. And so we can't stop it because that's, that's just lake. That's what lakes do. That's, that's mother nature. It's Lake Ontario. Uh, but once it gets far enough up the sand, we can do something about it. So, so we do tell people, um, you know, it's not, it's not dangerous. It's what's in the lake. Uh, but, but sometimes it also stirs up any other algae that's in the lake or bacteria. So from birds, uh, from other animals, um, that's, that's primarily the cause of, uh, you know, just naturally occur occurring uh, bacteria. So we do tell people after a rainstorm, and especially if you see that stuff that's gotten churned up, uh, that's a good time to check the the safety le levels in terms of the the water quality. And Halton Region does test that for us. Um, I believe it's three times a week, uh, at least once a week, and that's posted online and on a sign down at the beach, so you can see whether it's safe to go swim. Well, wow, that's a pretty detailed answer. Well, wow. <laughs> oh oh well, I know a lot about sludge now. So thank you. Keep those questions coming because as you learn, I learn. Uh, getting the getting the answers for you, it's an education for me too. That's crazy. Uh, what, <laughs> um, Monday mail bag, is that yes. kind of like a social thing or is that like one question a week? What is it? It's one question a week. So sometimes, so what we've, I used to do this as a counselor. I just called it questions for the counselor and it was once a month. It was in my right. uh, monthly newsletter, but we thought, well, this would be, and, and we will collect up every week the questions and put it in my monthly newsletter if you missed, if you yeah. missed one. But there are times when we start to see trends, right? You see four or five or 10 or 15 questions all about the same topic. And so that kind of tells us that you know, this might be an answer that that more than the one person or two people or 15 people on email, like maybe the whole community would like to see the answers to this. So we we have a look. Um, our team looks every Thursday, Friday to see what the hot topics are, what the questions are, if we're getting multiple questions about a single issue. And then that's what we uh, put in the mayor's Monday mailbag. And we put that question and answer out. So we've got uh, we've already got them teed up for the next week or two because we're getting we're getting lots of similar questions uh on a, on a couple of topics so watch for awesome. that awesome um that is all that i have do you is there anything else that you want to bring up chat about or anything or so a couple of things that happened at halton regional council last week so I brought two motions forward, both uh, resolutions that were both unanimously supported. One was very similar to the motion that, that was brought to uh, Burlington City Council, calling on the federal go government to have a national day of mourning for, uh, for Indigenous people and the loss of life, particularly at residential schools. Uh, we also committed to a workshop to educate ourselves. We've committed to the truth and reconciliation calls to action as they relate to municipalities. So, uh, so that was uh, passed unanimously at Burlington City Council as well as last week at Regional Council. 
secondly, um, we, uh, I brought a motion forward asking the province to extend the ban on evictions because quietly uh, on June 1st, when we rolled out of lockdown and into the first stage, that eviction ban was lifted. And, and even our own housing providers at Halton Region who are in the business of making sure people don't become evicted or making sure they can remain housed so they don't become homeless, they weren't aware. And I found out about it because a resident said, I'm about to be evicted. And were you aware that the province quietly lifted this? I had no idea. So, uh, and, and the challenge is that, that folks are having trouble because, you know, if you're, not, if you're not connected or your internet is turned off for non-payment, you can't attend a land, you know, landlord tenant tribunal. It's hard to gain access to justice. We've had our own courthouse closed due to mold and, and they've had to move to the convention center in Burlington. I mean, there's lots of challenges due to COVID and other things that, that have compromised people's ability to get the supports that they need to stay housed. And now the eviction ban uh, was lifted. And, and there are still people, obviously, who are out of work because their place of business has not opened yet. They're not eligible in the reopening framework. So, uh, so she, um, she knows who she is. And if she's watching, thank you. You keep using that awesome voice of yours. Um, and so I brought that resolution forward and it was a surprise to a lot of people. And so hopefully the province will, we asked them, we didn't pick a date, but we said as long as we're under some sort of emergency orders or shutdown, the ban, the eviction ban should be extended for that period of time. So that was unanimous, unanimously supported. Uh, have you heard back about? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sometimes, and and I don't I don't mean that critically. You know what? Um, it it can take some time to get a formal response back from other levels of government. They've got they've got lots of correspondence that they deal with. So we'll you know hope hopefully they'll see the light. But um, I have not formally heard back yet. No. Okay. Um, and uh, just on a, a lighter note, have you hit a patio? Oh, I've hit, I have hit a few. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> yes. okay. But I haven't done my tour of the neighborhood patios yet. So I know uh, Andy Marcolini, if you're out there watching judge and jury, yes, you are on my day card. I will come up <laughs> and see you. I just, uh, I just don't know exactly when yet, but um, yeah, I, uh, I do aim to get out to as many patios as I can, especially those that have been supported by the city of patio program, city patio program. So any patio that serves oysters, the mayor of Burlington will be there, right? That would be my goal. Yeah. Okay, and, right. and surprise, shockingly few, let me say. But, you know, we're a lake, not an ocean community. So. <laughs> I've learned how to shuck. I will say that. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not terribly fast, but I've learned how to shuck. So I can always get mine uh, locally at, at one of our fine uh, uh, fish shops. Nice. So, uh, well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much. Alrighty. We're over three minutes. I apologize. So no worries. We'll catch you next week. Always, always a good conversation. Thanks a lot, Kyle. Take care. Bye, man. Bye.